Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I hope that everybody is having an awesome week thus far. Uh, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, no matter how things look right now, just remember that you have the ability and the power to stop at any moment and press the reset button, reel yourself in, calm yourself down, refocus on the, the skills, the gifts, the preparation, the experience, and the power you have through what you have endured, through what you have overcome, through your direct connection and relationship with God, that there's absolutely nothing you're going to face in this life that you do not have the resources and the power to overcome. What you are facing right now that seems overwhelming is nothing but an illusion. Why? Because there can be no obstacles or undesirable circumstances to the mind of God. And the mind of God is in you. It surrounds you. It serves you. You can call on it for your slightest need. Don't be shaken by the momentary uh, discomfort. Don't be shaken by the momentary frustrations and setbacks and delays. You have everything that you need at your disposal. Just calm down so that you can hear. Calm down so that you can feel. Calm down and listen. Uh, I am not going to take a whole lot of time. I have an 8.30 uh, session with a client, but I did want to reach out this morning that it is Mindful Tuesdays and you know how much emphasis I put on the way we think, the way we operate based on our beliefs. And so I want to take the time to reach out to you and share something today. Um, again, there are a couple of links, maybe one link in the description box, check it out. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the promotion side of things right now, I'm in this zone. And so I'm gonna stay there. Um, I, I share enough of what I do and where I do it and what's available that you will catch it at some point if you haven't already caught it. Those who want it and need it will get it. Uh, those who are not ready for it or don't desire it won't and that's all good. Um, let me uh, get started here. Um, it's Mindful Tuesday. So we're thinking about not just how we think but being mindful of our thoughts, our speech and our behavior. All of them are interconnected. All of them influence one another. All of them either reinforce or dissect and disconnect beliefs. And so we're either reinforcing our current beliefs or we are literally disconnecting the current beliefs and installing new beliefs that work for us better. And we're doing that by how we think, how we speak, what we see, what we hear who we allow around us. All of these things are gonna have a massive impact. So the first thing that I wanna to talk to you about, I wanna to talk to you uh, about two things primarily. And like I said, I'm going to be uh, quick and succinct with it because you know I have some things I have to get to. I have some things I have to get to. Um, Expose yourself to better things, to better people. It's extremely important that you understand that. When I say expose yourself, I'm not talking about creating exposure for an idea or a business adventure. I'm saying put yourself in the center of things that you want to experience. Put yourself in the center of things that will give you uh, a, a snapshot or a quick uh, experience into what it is that you want to go into. See, I'm a little different uh, than a lot of people who may be in my position or may have experienced a certain level of success and start to preach and teach, you know, responsibility. I'm, I'm real huge on being responsible and how you spend, be responsible in what you what you invest yourself in. And I, I don't just mean your money, I mean your time, your energy. It's so important that you guard that. But here's what I don't do. I don't stop people from experiencing things that cost them if those things are gonna open up an entire new world for them. You know, I remember the first time, uh, you know, I went outside of the country uh, and that, that experience from the cultural shift 
uh, to the different environment, the, to the understanding that there are people around the world who don't place the same values on the things that I place values on uh, and so much. Uh, I remember even more early in time, you know, I, I, I got a chance to fly earlier than most that come out of my, uh, my, my community that I grew, my neighborhood I grew up in. But uh, I always flew coach. And one day I just decided I'm gonna spend a little money. And this is even after I had reached a certain level of success in, in having finances. I just automatically booked coach. Never, you know, that mindset, man, I'm not spending that much money on uh, a wider seat. You know, you've heard what you've heard it, but you you have an experience, you've heard what you get, you know, you get this, you get this, you get this. And you're like, okay, I'm not doing it. And one day some something said, just upgrade. Just upgrade. And go in and experience it one time. And it changed me. I'm still not someone that books every flight first class. I'm somebody that will probably go business class most of the time, uh, especially if the trip is under three hours. If it starts to go over three hours, then I need the comfort alone. I need the space alone. I'm not really big on being pampered uh, and all that stuff. Every now and then I'll do it for myself, but that's not big for me. I like space and quietness. So, you know, as long as nobody's bothering me, I can pretty much sleep anywhere. And that's what I'm doing on the flight most of the time. But the experience changed everything because then it was like, I needed to make sure that I had the type of money I needed that anytime I wanted to, I could. Uh, shopping in certain stores, I'm not, people will tell you right now, uh, you know, I've overcome a lot of the old weaknesses that I considered weaknesses. And I'm not saying that people who like shopping at places like this, have weaknesses because I see the experience as being something positive when you expose yourself to it. But here's the thing, what people don't think beyond is, okay, okay, let's say I'm shopping at an, uh, a high-end store, not gonna call any, call any names or anything, but I'm shopping at a high-end store. There are several experiences taking place, but most people don't get it. Mo most people get the experience of, I'm in here buying this thing that's probably 20 times more costly than the average thing that looks just like it, but probably not the same quality, but whatever, but mostly I'm playing, I'm, play, I'm paying for the experience and the brand name. But what you're missing in that experience is there are a bunch of other people in there that have access to this same experience. And it might be a person in there that can open the door for you that you can take your next step because see what you have to have is access. We tend to surround ourselves with people who are where we are or worse. We have this tendency to want to be the biggest fish in the room, the smartest person in the room, the person that everybody's patting on the back and looking up to. Yes, that's a good feeling, but see egos, a, a stroked ego don't pay the mortgage. A stroked ego doesn't give your kids access to the best education. A stroked ego doesn't put you in an environment where you don't have to worry about walking out of your house and getting shot. See, you're going to have to have the ability to create revenue for that. And then what you're going to find out is the, 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 the mainstream academic process doesn't necessarily prepare you to make the kind of money you want to make to live the type of life you want to live. That comes from experience, exposure, being taught an entirely different way of thinking, an entirely different way of moving, and an entirely different way of operating. There's, there, there's some times you're going to need to make that foolish purchase in order to see what it's like so you can be exposed to something. You may never, ever grow into liking that type of thing. You may never want to shop at Gucci, you may never wanna shop at Barney's and whatever else is out there that people love to shop at. You may never wanna stroll down Rodeo Drive or you know, uh, you know, Fifth Avenue or whatever in New York, whatever, you may not wanna do that. But exposing yourself to it, if it's only one time, gives you an insight into a different lifestyle and it's somewhere during that experience that you discover that everybody that's experiencing it at the same time as you is no different than you. They, 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 they have a brain, you know, they may have had some doors open for them. That's okay. You can have doors open for you. I, I don't ever buy into the self-made thing. You hear people all the time, I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made woman. I'm a self-made millionaire. No, 
you may not have taken the route of climbing a corporate ladder to get you a paper, but somebody taught you something. Somebody opened a door for you. Somebody encouraged you. Somebody sit by when everybody else thought you were crazy and told you it was a good idea. That is not self-made. That's having the right environment around you. That's being persistent. And that's going through everything you need to go through. But it starts with exposing yourself. So many of the ideas that I came up with came after I decided to climb out of my normal comfort zone and out of my, my inherent environment and move into some places that I didn't think I fit in. That, 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 that the people that were there didn't talk like me. They didn't wear the same attire as I did. I did I, they, but what they did is they, they had access to, them, to some things that I knew I needed access to. You've got to sometimes step out of the comfort zone, expose yourself to better things and better people. That's absolutely imperative. You can't get the same, res I mean, you can't get better results doing the same thing. You can't get better re results around people who are okay being where they're at. See, it's not just where you're at, it's the mindset about where you're at. See, at some point, you're gonna be in places you don't wanna be. And, and, and that's just life. Life is gonna happen. You're gonna experience success and then you're gonna get bumped down. You're gonna go through some things where everything seems great, and then you're gonna have a couple of rough patches. That's life. But what you don't want to do is be in an environment that you don't like being in and everybody in that environment that you have around you is okay with it. You're going to have to get to a point where you sit up and you're looking for people that aren't happy with it or people who have already been through it and have climbed out of it. People who can give you uh, good sound advice on the next step. People you can look at and say, you know what? If they can do it, I can do it too. But you're going to have to expose yourself to better people and better things. You're going to have to sit up and say it. I mean, you know, there are so many things I looked at. And to me, before I experienced it, it made absolutely no sense to me. And then when I did it, it was like, a wait a minute. It's more than what I thought it was. There's so much more to it than what I thought it was. Some things I... Uh, gravitated to other things that I experienced. I got what I needed out of it and I didn't really want to do it again, but it was different. It was something that showed me that there was an entirely different uh, world out there outside of the world I was living in, that it wasn't, I wasn't locked into that life, that at any time I chose to move into another realm, I had the uh, resources at my disposal to do it. But it comes with exposing yourself to the right people. We like comfort so much that we lose opportunities to advance. Why? Because the people we're comfortable with doesn't have the mindset, the skill set, or the desire to push us forward. And, here's, and this leads into the second thing. The second thing is this. Stop trying to get people who have no fire, no passion, no desire to use their gifts to elevate themselves and others. Stop looking to them to validate you. One of the biggest thing, one of the biggest mistakes people make is attempting to get other people to validate. And worse than that is sitting idle because what you want to do is scary. What you want to do comes with a certain level of uncertainty. And so you're sitting there and you're looking for someone outside of you to tell you what you want to do, what you're passionate about, what you're gifted to do is okay. Here's the problem with that. Your vision is your vision. You were gifted for something. You were put here for a purpose. Your, 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 your existence in this world isn't an accident or a coincidence. It is exactly specific, the purpose for which you are here. And you've been gifted and you, you've been given a talent and a gift and, 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 and inside of the talent and a gift is this thing that you do exceptionally well with very little effort, exceptionally well with little energy. You're just good at it. And everybody is different. You got a bunch of people who, uh, uh, who literally have law degrees, but were never gifted to do the things that you can't see on paper that law, that makes good lawyers, great lawyers, but they're just there because it, it, it comes with some decent pay and everything, but you watch them and they're empty, they blank, they're stale. If you ever want to go to a civil court or a criminal court, you'll learn real quickly by watching the, the attorneys on both sides 
and you'll find the ones that are there for a paycheck and the ones that are there because they're walking in their purpose. And it's a different light. It's a different energy. And, and, and you need to be around people who have the energy to push you out of your comfort zone because this is what happens when you're getting ready to do something exceptional, when you're getting ready to do something extraordinary. It's not going to feel comfortable. Why? Because you've never done it before. Every, every cell in your body is saying, this doesn't feel right. Why? Because I've been meandering through the maze of mediocrity so long that anything exceptional makes me feel uncomfortable. You're going to have to get used to being uncomfortable if you want to climb. The, uh, 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 the ladder of greatness, the ladder of phenomenal, the ladder of, of being exceptional. That's your responsibility. You were never put here to be comfortable. You weren't put here to barely survive. You weren't put here just to be in existence. You were put here so that you would leave an imprint on this world that, 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 that years after you're gone, people are talking about what you were able to do in your time. You were put here to be an inspiration to people who follow you to know that there's something better out there and they don't have to settle for the darkness that they're living in. You were not put here to meander through the maze of mediocrity. You were not put here to to, 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 to take on dwarf goals and colorless dreams. That's not why you were here. You were put here to walk out boldly into things that people had not yet experienced, had not yet accomplished. You are doing something so extraordinary that you're the first one to do it the way you do it. That's what's going to set you apart. Not trying to fit in. You see, because see, that's the thing that, that, that most people don't get. And that's why you got this big pool of average this big pool of mediocrity that everybody's in and everybody's good because everybody else is in it. And, and, and we get this mindset, man, if everybody's here, then it's a good place. No, see, see, you, you, you got, two, you got a choice. You got two primary choices in life. You can fit in or you can stand out. Now, the thing about it is you can't do both. You're either going to fit in and be like everybody else and get through life and barely even people barely even know you exist outside your immediate circle. You're not making any impact. You're not doing anything to change the world around you. You're doing a lot of complaining, but you're not really doing anything. You either fit in or you, when you stand out, you're not going to fit in very well. A lot of people are not going to like you. Why? Because the very nature of your existence rising convicts them of their mediocrity. You're going to have to understand that people are going to not like you because you're rising proves them wrong in that whatever excuse they're making for why they can't rise is no good excuse because you come from where they come from and you are rising and they can't stand it. They will do everything they can to convince you. And that's the problem of turning to people and looking for them to validate your vision. Why? Because if you let them validate your vision and you haven't taken the energy, the effort, and the commitment to engage this vision and make it work, no matter how many times you get knocked down. See, that's all it is, is most people are afraid of failure. You're going to fail. You're going to fail. You're going to fall down. Get up, dust yourself up. But here's the problem. If you don't engage this thing, if you don't commit to it, if you don't get a mindset that I refuse to quit, I refuse to turn around, no surrender, no retreat, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to get it or I'll at least die trying. It's no turning around. I don't have a plan B. This is who I am. This is what I'm going to become. I'm going to keep pushing until I get it. And then, but what happens if you don't commit? What happens if you're standing on the edge of fear? and you're looking for somebody to validate you, 99% of the people that you're gonna go, go to and ask to validate you are gonna try to talk you off the ledge. What they're gonna do is they're gonna talk to you and tell you all the things that can go wrong. They're gonna remind you of where you come from. They're gonna remind you of your past mistakes. They're gonna remind you the last time you tried to do something above, beyond, average, and mediocre. They're gonna keep on talking until they will eventually convince you that what you're trying to do has no value. And guess what you'll do? You'll take what they're saying and put your dream and your vision and your purpose and your destiny on the shelf to go fit in where you feel safe. You can't be safe and exceptional, I'm sorry. Even in the simple physical act of climbing, it calls for risk. If you're going to rise, it calls for risk. Let's look at the simple, the simple physical act of climbing. There's a ladder. You step on the ladder. You get two feet on the bottom rung and two hands on maybe the fifth rung or whatever, depending on the spacing of the rungs, and you've got there. Now, if the ladder's not moving and it's safely attached, you feel pretty safe. 
two feet flat, firmly planted, two hands tightly gripped, you're safe. But guess what? You're not moving anywhere. You're not going to raise, you're not going to gain one inch with both hands on the wrong and both feet on the bottom wrong. Guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to release a hand and a foot. Foot comes up, plants, the hand reaches up and grabs. That is a risk. Why? Because you've taken away some of your stability. You've taken away some of your uh, security and being firmly attached and gripped. And you've done that for what? The purpose of rising. You are going to have to understand that there's no safe place in, a, in, in, in climbing. You're going to have to understand that you'll get to a point of safety where you master something and you become so good at it that it's just natural. And you'll be able to gather your bearings and prepare what? To start climbing again. This is not about finding a safe space. This is about becoming the best you can possibly be. And that requires that you put some skin in the game. Stop asking people who have never committed to anything how you should commit to something. You need to be surrounding and exposing yourself to people that are doing exceptional and extraordinary things. You need to be finding and exposing yourself to people who can see the gifting in you. You need to be finding and exposing yourself to people who are willing to push you beyond where you feel safe moving so that you can experience things you've never experienced before. Expose yourself to things that you haven't done before. Stop off and buy one of those expensive watches. Stop off and buy one of those expensive bags or some luggage. Stop off and do that. I'm not saying make it a habit of trying to keep up with anybody. What I'm saying is do it once, just once, because it has an experience behind it, a feeling that you can't experience when you're sitting back here and not knowing what it's about, not understanding it. I'm not saying that it has value beyond that. That's for you to determine in your life. And the truth is, there's no wrong answer as long as you can justify what you're spending by what you're bringing in. That's the thing. If you have the ability to justify and justify your spending with your income, and then that is a part of a long-term plan to ensure that your life's good in that area as long as you live and beyond, that, that you'll be able to pass a legacy and a heritage of uh, abundance and wealth onto your progeny, you can do what you want to do. Now, there are some spending principles. I, I, I'm really focused now on sort of kind of staying in a lane where much of what I do is going to have to have some kind of long-term value to it. Now, obviously that's the thing you gotta need. You know, you go buy some stuff that appreciates. You're gonna buy food, that's gonna be gone in a week. You gotta have it to live though. There, there are some things you're gonna do, but, 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 but you gotta make sure that you start to think as an investor. And that comes across the board. It's not just about your money. The thing that you have that's most valuable to you is your mind and your time. How are you investing it? What are you reading? What are you watching? What are you talking about when you talk to other people? One thing that I share, and then I'll be done with this because I got to get off of here. One thing I'm going to share, which is this. Find you some people that you can talk about growing with. Find you some people you can talk about investing with. Find you some people that you can talk about building with. Stop trying to do everything on your own. Stop trying to be a, a ball of energy without having a source. You got to have something you're tapping into that regenerates you. You got to take some time to back off and rest. You got to take some time to intentionally grow. And what I mean by intentionally grow, you got to get to a point to where you're choosing the area you're enhancing by what you're engaging whether I'm reading a book, whether I'm watching uh, videos that, that are teaching me something I don't know, whether I'm around or at a seminar or conference or whatever. And I tell people all the time, and people think I'm joking. For, uh, my grandfather told me this because I'm a, I'm a talker. That's a part of my gifting. I can talk. And I can, I can talk in a way that people will understand complex things. 
I'm able to break down things that are complex, put them in a manner that the lay person can understand it. And that's a part of my gifting. And I talk a lot. I've always talked a lot, but very loquacious as a kid. Uh, I remember a time, looking at the time, I remember a time that I was sitting up in my grandmother's salon, a little kid, and I'm just talking. My grandma said, boy, please shut up. And she looked back over me and she told this story until she passed away. She uh, looked over at me and uh, after she told me to shut up a couple of minutes later and I'm sitting there and I'm crying. And she's like, boy, what's wrong with you? I want to talk. She said, well, talk then. And been, I've been talking ever since. But check this out. In that, in that nature of talking, I'm delivering something. I'm doing what I do, but I'm being around people who will encourage me, who, who I can encourage. It's so important for us to understand the force that we have in us. It's so important for us to get outside, but we need somebody to encourage us. We need to be around people who are going to share with us, pour into us, talk about things that we want to do. If you don't have somebody in your circle that you're talking about finances with, if you don't have somebody in your circle that you're talking about how to make your marriage better, if you don't have somebody in your circle that's encouraging you to be the best husband, the best wife, the best business person that you can be, then you are missing opportunities. I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully uh, somebody was uh, encouraged and blessed by this. Uh, you guys have an unbelievable day. Uh, hopefully I'll get back to you guys with something different a little later. I will see you then. And don't forget, live your life on full so that you die on me. I'm out.